people no longer bound by their non-disclosure agreements. What can you now disclose? My best friend worked at a roadside attraction near Chattanooga, TN, called Ruby Falls. There's something else called Ruby Falls elsewhere in the country. It's supposedly a waterfall inside a cave. Of course, the trail to the cave is redone with all sorts of rock brought in from around the world. I think they've owned up to that part now. But the waterfall itself is barely a trickle naturally, and then only in the wetter season. They've run a pipe up there to supplement the falls, hidden by cracks and crevices and cemented over, and powered by a pump off to the side, which you can't hear when the water is splashing down from 100 feet overhead. It's 99% from the city of Chattanooga, or maybe Lookout Mountain, municipal water supply. Of course, with such a wet area, old electrical wires going back to the Great Depression, and 300 feet underground, it sputters or shorts out and stops every now and then. The first rule in the falls room is make everybody leave immediately if the power goes out. Not for safety, but because the fable agreed upon will be shown as fake. The book you're reading might only be a bestseller because the author had enough money to buy thousands and thousands of copies, have them shipped to a warehouse for storage, and eventually destroyed. The secret ingredient in Jimmy John's tuna salad is key command soy sauce. I worked at a small bakery in New York City when I was younger. Every morning the bakery would take their day old cupcakes and deliver them to a tour company that did sex in the city tours. The tour company would pass our cupcakes off as cupcakes from Magnolia, and significantly much more popular bakery. I went on that tour with my ex-wife and ate one of those cupcakes. Is that Weish's next wife? When I was fired from Auntie Anne's in 2010. I signed a 10-year non-compete NDA contract, promising not to detail the baking secrets or work for another pretzel establishment. Well that ended this year so now I can run out and start a pretzel store because the secret I was keeping was making pretzels literally requires two products. One of them being water and the other a large bag of pretzel meal dust powder. Quite literally anyone with $2,500 can start a pretzel stand and make perfectly fine pretzels. It's not difficult whatsoever. Well you forgot to say what the secret browning agent is that all the pretzels get dipped into before they go on the sheet and into the oven. It's baking soda and water. Mystery solved. Also lemonade too. 4. 8. Refrigerate. You know NDAs are only good if you have the money to sue? Worked with a company that didn't pay me. So I told them their NDA didn't apply, they threatened to sue. My response you can't even afford to pay me, you sure as hell can't afford to sue. They also don't extend to keeping you from reporting illegal activity to the justice system. Some places may try to make people believe that and may even try to imply it in the NDA, but it has no legal standing. I used to work for a large gas station chain. I worked at its warehouse where it creates a lot of the donuts. The room was really hot so we were always sweating. There's some machines where the donuts get glazed in chocolate. They're these small machines they look almost like a BBQ grill. They always wanted us to be super fast glazing the donuts. Working in a hot room and working at super fast speeds it was natural for a lot of people's sweat to just drip in the chocolate underneath us. Never eat the chocolate donuts from a gas station. Honestly if the worst thing in those donuts is human sweat. I'm impressed. Do you want to know how they make the holes in the donuts? I signed an NDA after negotiating a six-figure settlement with my mortgage lender. Back in 2013, the bank illegally sold my home while I was living there and making monthly payments. I discovered this when new owners evicted me and my three kids. At the time, I thought someone was trying to steal my identity, etc. I spent the next two years writing legal documents and had to represent myself in court. The bank owned every legit legal firm I contacted. Also, the first lawyer I hired took my last $7,000 and was promptly disbarred for misconduct with previous cases. I had no money, no home but I had a laptop, printer and access to the county court law library. We were about a week away from selecting a jury when we came to a settlement agreement. In the end, each of my kids, now in their 20s, got an inexpensive new car and I live at the beach. Which bank, you ask? I can't tell you the name, but might I suggest that it rhymes with case. They settled because they were worried that if the case went to trial, it would become public. Then, everyone would know, for certain, that they had lied, cheated and swindled to steal homes from hard-working people. 
the bank would lose when no one took out new loans with them. I was a contractor for NASA, I still fully support the agency, but I was extremely bugged when I learned that each separate NASA center, for example, JPL, Kennedy, Ames, Goddard, hides many of its inventions and breakthroughs from the other centers so that when HQ is ready to assign a big mission, and a lot of dollars, to one center, they have a better chance to compete over the others. Look what we invented, Ames can't do this over there, give us the next moon orbiter. The downside is that there is a ton of reinvention and duplicated efforts going on. Sometimes years of work go down the drain when another center does the same thing faster. My perspective was, you will work for NASA, share knowledge, collaborate. I was frequently ordered to turn down anything revealing when speaking to other centers. That's not at all different from how the big national labs used to work. The rivalry between Lawrence Livermore and Los Alamos is almost legendary. Supposedly they got better about sharing but it wouldn't shock me if they were still up to the same hijinks. McDonald's made me sign a NDA regarding a robbery that took place during a graveyard shift. They made me take a refined polygraph test because they thought my ex and I were involved due to the simple fact that I had stopped by that day to pick up some documents. I was a manager. I had business to do. F you. Nick Miller. Hell. The first day of my first job was at a Hardee's. We were robbed. It was really obvious my manager had set it up as there was over a grand in my register and she wouldn't swap out the till. Then when the robber was running off she yells out wait. You forgot this and gets the $50 and $100 bills from under the drawer. Then pretended to faint. After the police interviewed us they just left. She expected me to finish my shift and I just laughed and walked out never to return. I once had to sign an NDA to get a price on a printer for my sign shop. This was a printer that was only sold by one distributor, by the way, so there wasn't even any direct competition on this particular model. I think the gimmick was that if they make a really big deal out of giving you the super secret pricing that you'd be lulled into thinking it was really something special. They weren't worried about you going to a different supplier. They wanted to be able to offer different prices to different customers. This is a concept called price discrimination and is a very common practice. Never had an NDA on this but if I'd give too much info, I'll get tagged and likely get in serious trouble. BCBS had a severe security breach back in 2007. If you were with them in a certain area of the country and ever called them the number for help on your account, all of your personal info was caught by a third party. Every caller, every piece of data, they never disclosed this breach. I dug up some ancient bones, gold, and Mycenaean tombs. I couldn't discuss the finds until the institution who ran the archaeological dig could publish the data. You can read about it here. The owner of the company is an absolute psycho. They have been trying to hire developers for years now, and despite paying really well, they can't keep them. I quit after 3 days. I was trying to help out on a high priority bug on my third day, when I said all the requests to X endpoint are failing to which he replied I see 1 out of 500 requests succeeding. Does that sound like all to you? He then called a company wide all hands meeting, and proceeded to tell everyone how important it is that we all speak carefully, and that we don't need defying retards like me lying to the company making it harder to diagnose issues. I told him to go f himself and quit on the spot. Turns out the company has a big history of this. My boss who had been there for 2 weeks had tried to quit the week prior, but was convinced to stay on to meet me. He left a few days after me. Apparently a few people got together and tried to tell the owner that he needs to watch how he talks to people. And he blew up on them about it too. I later heard that I was something like the 10th person to quit within their first month in a row. The sad truth is that the dude actually seems pretty smart. But has been acting like a megalomaniac while he pisses his money away and abuses his employees that are for whatever reason unwilling to leave. This is juicy. I like this one. Oh. I forgot one other part of this story that makes it really funny. They offered a quitting bonus thing since they were having so much trouble even getting people in the door for interviews due to a ton of bad company reviews. They had in the contract that you would be able to get a few thousand if you left, and weren't fired, within the first 90 days. Apparently it was the owner's idea. Well when I told the owner to f off, I quickly sent an email announcing my resignation. To which he replied all saying let's have a phone conversation about this. It would be highly premature for you to leave on your third day. 
I declined. The quitting bonus was contingent on signing a non-disparagement agreement. A few days after I left, I get an email from the owner's right hand man sending me a link to an ex-company Facebook group where past employees go to network or something. I had no interest in that, so I declined. But I'm convinced that it was an attempt to get me to break my non-disparagement agreement. If I joined the group and talked sh about the company, he would try to sue for the quitting bonus back. I don't know for sure that's what it was, but it just stinks of that nut job trying to be clever. Also, that quitting bonus is no longer offered on their recruiting page. I worked at a gym, and in the showers there was yellow shampoo and blue body wash and pump dispensers. I found out that the only difference between the two soaps was the color. This is your last chance. After this, there is no turning back. You use the yellow shampoo the story ends. You wake up in your bed and believe whatever you want to believe. You use the blue body wash you stay in Wonderland and I show you how deep the rabbit hole goes. As someone learning to make soap, it's hilarious that in the industry, recipes are protected as trade secrets but there's literally only so many ways you can make soap. Have you tried using human fat, like from a liposuction clinic? My graphic designer best friend won my town's design the centennial logo contest, despite having never set foot in the town. I worked for the radio station, and just did an interview with one of the organizers, where he lamented that there weren't very many entries, so I called my friend and said, want in on this, he said, sure, as he lived on the other side of the country at the time, I spent the next day texting him photos of the town for inspiration, anyway, when he won and they found out he was a professional graphic designer who lived on the other side of the country, they made him and me sign NDAs because the town was afraid people would think they brought in a ringer. How did they make you? They threatened to withhold the prize and you threatened to tell the public, which would be way worse PR wise than what they alone wanted the NDA for. Presumably if they didn't sign the NDA, they wouldn't have picked the design. I used to do data analysis of revenue management for some big companies. Many companies have no clue about their data or their revenue streams. I'm talking several million dollars of revenue disappearing in the pipeline and no one knowing what happened with it, or even caring really. There were multiple times I had to inform clients that we had huge gaps in their costs and we needed to find the missing numbers somewhere in order to make our final reports correct and was met with a, paraphrased, reply, just sprinkle the missing costs over the existing one, we just want the final total to be correct. All the companies cared about if the amount of money they have at the end of the year is higher than at the beginning and anything that happens in between is inconsequential. I objected at first to my bosses, saying that what we were doing was incorrect, but they said to just do as the client said. In the end, I got disillusioned and whenever our clients came with requests that made no mathematical or logical sense. I just execute as requested and let their analysts figure out later that the analysis they paid six figures for was basically nonsense. I didn't care, because I had documentation of all their requests and my objections which were thoroughly ignored. I had a few cases where clients came back disgruntled several months down the line after some in-house analyst had done a deep dive of their data and came up with objections that I had pointed out months before. I'd usually dig up the relevant emails and clear my name. My choice of action was to tell them to pound sand, but my boss is always bent over backwards for clients, so we'd have to do the cleanup I anticipated. In the end I learned most of our economy is held together by duct tape and wishful thinking. At most 10% of people working at big companies are competent and carry the bulk of the work and rarely are the competent ones the ones in charge incompetence. This should be higher up the list. It's scary how incompetent people just go for their way into positions of power and really have no idea how to run a business. I used to work in fine dining in Oklahoma City. Coke. Coke everywhere. I've personally walked in on several NBA players over the years. Face down in that white girl. Come to mention it, I've seen several of them effing other guests on the same bathroom counter that their teammates just did a line off of. Personally got to watch Harold Hamm sign his divorce check. $975 million is a whole lot of zeros in a small space. Wild times indeed. Well this is already public knowledge, and they forgot to have me sign an NDA anyway. 
at Savannah College of Art and Design's Omudsman Sophia Bagnoli, the independent person who's supposed to represent students in cases of unfair treatment by the school, married one of the school's vice presidents to and is now Sophia Aletto. It's definitely a conflict of interest but she's still serving as independent ombudsman, and currently refusing to help students get any kind of refund now that all their classes are online and they don't have access to the expensive equipment their expensive tuition is supposed to be paying for. I may be remembering incorrectly, but doesn't SCAD have a lot of issues with student health, including abnormal attempted suicide rates with students? Wouldn't that fall under unfair treatment by the school? This seems really problematic. I had to sign an NDA to work at this tech company, and I'm still waiting to accidentally overhear something cool so I can feel special for knowing something important but being legally barred from disclosing it. Pro tip. 99% of the other people there are in the same boat, start talking loudly on the phone, or in a stage whisper with a colleague after overtly double checking hey you signed the NDA right, and you can at least make everyone else feel special. Well the data screw you up was just another packaged library issue, they've reverted it now, but you can't roll back whatever's in the wind already, so did the NSA say anything about the strange numbers you were seeing, what do you mean plead the fifth, sure it runs faster now, but aren't you a little worried about the radiation? Star Wars Battlefront 2 EA will have microtransactions, the NDA was signed in 2016. I was getting more and more worried as the release date kept getting closer and then it happened. The backlash was so strong that EA went down in the history books as most downvoted comment in Reddit's history. Any more details you can dish out about this? I remember when this all came to a head. My NDA is classified military information. Of course it's almost 25 years now so I can tell you about the Battle of Norfolk. We're gonna shoot the other guys. As a lawyer. I viewed a lot of these in tort settlements. The most common use of the NDA is to keep the award amount quiet so everyone won't sue the company hoping to get that sweet, sweet settlement money. In the id world, it is often that the piece of internal software or system that gives your company an edge is not quite as huge a deal as it seems. Often it is not much more than a couple of technologies mashed together to automate things in a way nobody else is doing yet, and those things are fiercely guarded. I had cases where people saw stuff in action and tried to replicate it but could not because they were missing just one small piece. A couple of technologies mashed together to automate things. You've just described the whole software engineering, and it's not a bad thing, actually. I used to work for a construction company in rural Texas, and man we did so much shady sh. Honestly my boss was like the Joe Exotic of construction, always calling us the N word cussing us out, threatening to fight us, none of our haul trucks could pass a state inspection because he was too cheap to fix them up, he never paid his taxes on any of the track hose, anytime the tax man would show up, we would have to drive all the equipment deep into the woods to hide it, he always paid the osher inspector off because he knew our shops couldn't pass inspection, we had mountains of scrap metal in the woods, mountains of old oil buckets stacked in the woods, we had an old rail car in the back that was full of oil hydraulic transmission fluid. The cap was off so when it rained it overflowed and would just drain into the earth. I can't count how many times we would get some equipment in and he would tell us to dump the fluid into one of the ponds. We always had guys up there trying to sell drugs and sh**, telling you my three years there was wild. Well. Facebook moderators could disclose the trauma they've experienced moderating one of the biggest social media platforms in the world. They've witnessed horrific things that you would only ever think could happen in a war. One anecdote was of a woman who saw a man stabbed dozens of times, begging for his life. Usually, they don't last long, but the things they see on the job stick with them for years after they quit, and, unlike actual Facebook employees, they don't get paid very well or receive much at all in terms of compensation. Cognizant, the company that manages Facebook's moderation, offers them counseling while they work there, but the second they quit, they no longer have access to it and must either deal with the consequences on their own or get the money for a therapist. This shes effed up, and the icing on the cake is the NDA which means that they would take huge personal risk in warning anybody else about the job. New people signing up think they are getting a cushy job albeit with relatively low pay, then get slammed in the face with things that no one should have to see, much less interact with as their job. 
Funny story, moments after I was unceremoniously fired because my tech skills were found to be insufficient, the bosses who fired me demanded to know the whereabouts of a hugely important computer file I had worked on. I refused to help them. I even cited the exact language of the NDA I was compelled to sign. I am prohibited from disclosing details of my employment with anyone, including past and current employees of the company, I expounded, adding so ask someone who works here, because I don't it was a great f you moment that I still cherish 5 years later, but now I think I can disclose the truth, I only hid behind the NDA language because I had no clue where to find their damn computer file or even where to look. I suck with computers. Fired because my tech skills were found to be insufficient I suck with computers. This checks out. How do you even get in this situation Lmao? Too dumb to hire. Too smart to fire. I used to work at a zoo. I've got a few. One day, electricity failed. So the polar bears and wolves were able to break out of their barbed wide compounds. Zookeeper told me this while I was located in a kiosk that was situated right next to both the wolves and polar bears. Yikes. Luckily, they decided to not test the fences that day. A few baboons escaped. Zookeepers had to shoot one and tranquilize the others. Supervisor told me I would be fired immediately if I called the press. Thanks. A Swedish car brand called us to ask if we were willing to rent them a moose for a commercial. We told them no. We do not rent out our animals. Probably the biggest one. One of our zookeepers saw that they had too much of a certain rat-like species. He was tasked to shoot them, but didn't have the heart, so he released them into the wild. Without our supervisors knowing. Few years later, we have reports of these animals actually causing destruction to our dikes. Oops. Had to keep them a secret while working there, but have been working other jobs for a few years now. Popular dog kennel I worked for would have people leave their dogs for long periods of time. Dogs would stop eating, they wouldn't tell the owners this. People would leave beds and special toys and treats for their pet thinking they'd get these items. A little slice of home. These items would go in a trash bag and it would be set aside. Treats would be thrown out. They use the excuse that it created too much laundry and that having personal items in a dog's kennel made them aggressive and protective over their stuff towards both humans and other dogs. Okay but no. These are people's pets they're not f fine wolves. Short of making a Facebook post that no one would see I had no real way of telling the public and risking some bullsh lawsuit because I signed an NDA like a dummy. But I told everyone I knew with a dog to tell other dog owners not to send their dog there. Your dog can't tell you what happens when you're not around. Dogs would run into us with their tail wagging because they liked the yard workers but the conditions overall weren't great. Dogs are so good and loyal. Small spaces and loose regulations on how many dogs you can have at once. It still boils my blood when I drive by. Hopefully things there are better now. The cake cupcake shop I used to work for claimed everything was homemade, but used Pillsbury cake mix as a base. Super common. I'm a chef and have seen this countless times. Pillsbury makes industrial size cake mixes for precisely this purpose. I'm a baker and I don't even really see this as the type of fraud people seem to. It's just all the dry ingredients premeasured. If anyone wanted to they could probably do an exact match with raw ingredients themselves. But honestly it's the literal baking that a lot of people can't seem to do. And decorating a cake is next freaking level stuff. I read a thread I think it was a confessions thread on Ask Reddit. Where a woman who ran a super successful home bakery business was literally just using Pillsbury cake mix. And this is how I learned what Pillsbury was as we don't have it in England. She had the odd hack or two and was seriously good at decorating apparently, but she was essentially just using cake mix. She even talked about how she felt like a fraud, got nauseous about going to the grocery store, and hated the sight or taste of cake. I remember this. She would log in once every few years and give updates. Last I read. She stopped doing cakes because it became too much for her. My mom does cakes as a side gig and while she makes her own frosting from scratch. She uses boxed cake mix that she, too, passes off as her own. Probably way more common than anyone lets on. The head shop. Smoke shop. I used to work at old whippets. Nitrous cartridges. Behind the counter under the guise of being cake ingredients. All someone had to do was walk in and say they were looking to bake a cake. I'm not sure if they still do it but I wouldn't be surprised. Their machine doesn't do what they want it to. 
because they designed it and they're not engineers. Also all investments into their company is investment into a long term project that they're making out will take way less time than it will. I'd rather not risk it, but let's just say hypothetically that a certain tech company who is, ahem, inside keeps its campus is pretty subpar, I'm talking old, rundown buildings that need dozens of buckets everywhere to catch water every time it rains, they bully companies in the local economy to put up with their horse shot cause they know they are too big to hear a no, hypothetically, see Monday, give us some more intel, this was the only comment that helped me understand, I sued my boss for sexual harassment, I'm guessing I'm still not supposed to tell but f them, won some money, got a better job.